we play and call it work. Warhammer 40k Incursion Battle Report. Hey there Wargamers, Josh here with Luca to bring you another Incursion Bat Rep. Today it will be my brand new played them with played them against Dave once. I don't know the order that these are coming out. Tempest of Scions versus Luca and the weirdest Death Guard list that I can't figure out what it does. It's got them right shook, boys. I, every time I go to play against Luca, I'm like, I, I, I just get shook. I'm like, wait, what does your army do? Right. You play well, the wackiest armies. It's just, I've been wanting to play this for a while, and I remember to play today, and I just so happen to be playing Incursion today. It's not going to be that effective, but it's going to be cool. Is it going to be not that It might be crazy effective. It could be crazy effective, but the I, objectives are weird. Already, I'm like, I don't know how to play anymore. I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm glad I told Luca. I'm like, you know what? I got like a ton of really high AP guns. And he's like, cool, cool. Here's Foxwalkers. No, that's zombies. not how it was. We both had these lists ahead of time. We just kind of plopped them on the table and. Right. Well, mine, mine was like it's half of a two thousand point list I had built because I just wasn't prepared for the incursion today. But now I am. Poxwalker zombies. That's Why do you get your eyes closed the whole time you're talking? They didn't have to you point that out. You leave that character from Third Rock to the Sun. You didn't have to point sun. that out. You didn't have to point that out. My eyes, I'm just tired. I'm comfortable. You ever just stand still? You're driving in a car. Or no, you're in the passenger seat of the car. And you just close your eyes. And you just go to sleep. That's what happened there. I didn't sleep well last night. Well, it happens. All right. To the armies! This here is the Death Guard list I'll be playing in today's game. This is actually only 702 points. That's that's the first uh, red flag for Josh there. He's like, wait, why is your list only 702 points? I don't get it. Why don't you just add 298 points? Well, you see, viewers, I am playing Pox, not Poxmogger, sorry, the Harbingers, because it's fitting. This is the first great plague company, the one that is led by Typhus over here. You know, it's one of the great seven companies uh, from the Death Guard back in the Heresy, and he was the first captain who led the first great company. And now he continues to lead this company, and it focuses on... There's only two Space Marines! How's it a great company? Three. There's three. This well, is like, there's this him, and then two Space Marines. There's... <laughs> there's three Space Marines, and this is only a fraction of the major force on this major conflict that's going on. There's definitely, definitely, definitely other Space Marines nearby. I'm just focusing on the zombies that Typhus is leading. Now, what you're about to see here is a true zombie-esque style list for Death Guard. Uh, the only downside to it, no, there's two downsides, two major downsides. It sucks if it doesn't go first, uh, if your opponent has a lot of shooting, so it's a little iffy in this game, as you'll see Josh's list. And it requires a lot of models, so if you don't have a massive collection already, it's hard to pull this off. In fact, it's in a proper 2,000 point game, I have to supplement it in uh, Age of Sigmar Zombies from the Legions of Nagash to count all of the Poxwalkers. I, I, sometimes I end up having 200 Poxwalkers in one unit on the table. Now, the reason my list is sub 1,000 points is because I had to pay reinforcement points to bring the Poxwalkers over their maximum unit size. And I'm using the Cultists to feed that into them through the use of a stratagem called, I believe, the Dead Walk Again, which I'll explain in further detail once we actually get to the game. Now, I'm not actually, oh, well, that's not true. I am using the Relic from the Harbingers just because it sounds cool. That's a Rot Skull Bomb. We're in, we're in a patrol, by the way. I guess this could be a battalion, not that it matters. It's a patrol, a battalion, it's a detachment. We have three HQs over here. Uh, we're actually gonna have Typhus be the Warlord because it seems the most fitting. And I, yeah, the other Warlord traits weren't really, I wasn't too keen on them anyways. It's, it's Typhus, he's the name character, he's cool. He's the leader of the Great Plague Company. Why is he not the Warlord? That's right, he is. He's gonna have Blades of Putrefaction as a psychic power, as well as Oh, putrescent vitality. Both are pretty critical for this list, methinks. I will not be upgrading him to be a... Oh, it's the upgrade for these guys. It lets them re make some Chaos Lords. I, I cannot justify bringing that, I think. I need my command points elsewhere, and it's only rerolling hit rolls of one, and I have a tally man nearby. I think, for the most part, I'm okay without that upgrade on him for this game. And I assume a lot of you out there will agree. Now, for the two support characters in the back, we have a Tallyman. He is going to have the Relic, the Rot Skull Bomb. It replaces his Blight Grenade. And it is Grenade 2d3 that automatically hits. And it's like Strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. So it's, uh, in this case, it'll be a Flat Grenade for the most part. Josh loves those. And we're also going to have a Foul Blight Spawn. Uh, he's, he had, it was enough points to fit him in here. It kind of made sense. And I do like bringing him. And oddly enough, he will be good against the Flyers. Not that... I brought him for that specifically, but the original 2,000 point list has two of these guys. Well, it's pretty much all this, but times two. So it's 
240 man squads of cultists. In fact, it's a little bit more. It's got some demon engines in it as well. But this is all I could fit in a thousand points. We have two squads of 20 cultists. They are going to have auto, auto cannons, auto guns. And we have, you met 40, 40 cultists <laughs> auto cannons. Can? <laughs> okay, they're pretty heavily armed. <laughs> Incredibly heavily then maybe armed. Maybe they are the Great Play Company. <laughs> and. <laughs> I was going to say, if they could all take auto cannons, I got uh, I ignore moving and firing heavy with my infantry. And cultists don't get the mere mortals rule yet until this gets reprinted, probably. So they could theoretically walk around all with auto cannons hitting on fours. Be dope. All right, and then we have 20 box walkers to sign off the list. Now, the problem with this list is if it does not go first, I don't get to use Cloud of Flies on these guys, nor do I get to do the dead walk again. And that means uh, these guys can be shot up and I won't be able to bring Poxwalkers back to this unit. So here's hoping I go first. It's not over if I don't, but I'll be able to showcase this a little bit better if I do. And that's going to be up to random chance. Let's go take a look at some lame humans. I present to you lame humans. Well, here's my thousand points of my brand new Scions. <laughs> they're not lame. They got glowy eyes. Yeah, they got glowy. Oh, do they all have the glowy eyes? They, yeah. they're, they were, I don't know if they're supposed to be modeled off, off of it or what it is, but they remind me of Hellgast. Yeah, they they kind of get that vibe, and then the same, um, what is it, the Wolf Brigade? The uh, Jinro, if anybody's familiar with that. Right. So, 1,000 points. Uh, let's start with the 10-man squad. So I got three 10-man squads, two have hotshot volley guns, uh, the Sarge has plasma pistol power fist, and then there's one other squad that just has uh, plasma instead of hotshot volley guns. Jeez, they get two per five A special weapons. They do. Um, honestly, probably not my preferred loadout if I knew what I was going to play against, but like, <laughs> I don't like doing tailored lists, so we'll see if this works. I've got two five-man squads where the Sarge just has a plasma pistol and chain sword, and then there's two plasma guns in each of those. Up front, I got my two Tempestor Primes. The fellow with the binocular is going to be the Warlord, and he will have the keys to the Armory Warlord trait and Kurov's Aquila, because eventually the bird will work. And then the other one, I am going to spend Command Point, give him the Warlord trait. The uh, I get Command Points back on the 5-1. I can't remember what it's called Grand right now. Grand Strategist, something like that. Grand Strategist, I think you are correct. Thank you for knowing my army better. Than uh, that I... might be the Necron one, which is like near identical. So. <laughs> it's, it's that one that they all get. So the guard, I think the guard one's Grand Strategist, and the Necron one is Hyperlogical Strategist. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and then in the back, I got three Valkyries with uh, the rocket pods. Right. Who and multi laser. Who brings three Valkyries to a 1,000? I game? my Toroxes aren't ready yet. Now uh, here's the thing: we were talking about this before. If I had my three Toroxes instead of these three Valkyries, I, I could get a little bit. I, I think I'd have a couple more. Be well, more a better confident. loadout for the squads. Yeah. And oh boy, would I be more confident with the three Torox Gatling cannons. Yeah, shooting at Poxwalkers. I agreed 1,000%. Now, my only answer to these guys, ironically, is my flame. I said flamers against flyers. So, the foul blight spawn churning up his muculent broth and unleashing it upon the skies. And the guy with the automatically hitting a rot skull bomb, too, will maybe help me out with these. We'll see. We'll see. Is that it for the regular humans? Yeah, that's it. Regular humans. The mission today is Eternal War Incursion Forward Push. The deployment map includes Hammer and Anvil style player deployment zones. With four objective markers labeled A and D are placed in the deployment zones, with objective markers labeled B and C placed in no man's land. Rules for this mission include Quick March, which states any advance rolls of less than three made in the first battle round instead count as three. The primary objective is take and hold, which is progressive. At the end of each player's command phase, the player whose turn it is scores five victory points for each of the following conditions they satisfy for a maximum of 15 victory points. They control one or more objective markers. They control two or more objective markers. They control more objective markers than their opponent controls. This primary objective cannot be scored in the first battle round. The secondary objective in this mission is called Forward Push, which is progressive. It states, if you select this objective, then units in your army can perform the following action. One unit from your army can start to perform this action at the start of your movement phase, if it is within range of an objective marker that you control. The action is completed at the end of your turn, and you score a number of victory points depending on which marker this action was performed on. This mission rewards you for holding objective markers that are placed farther away from your initial starting point. For instance, if you are player A in this scenario, and you wish to perform this action for this secondary objective, you would score one victory point for objective marker labeled A, two victory points 
labeled B, four victory points labeled C, and eight victory points labeled D. Conversely, it works in the opposite direction for the opposing player. Thanks for watching this game, folks. Paired with it in the Mini War Gaming Vault is going to be another 1,000 point incursion game. This time, Josh and I are changing it up to Space Wolves, led by Ragnar, to go up against House Mortan, is it? House Mortan. Imperial Knights. If you're not a Vault member and you want to check this game out, click on the link down below to see how the Space Wolves fare against the big Imperial Knights. Here is a shot of the very small table we're playing on. Minimum size uh, recommended size for incursion. Uh, thanks to a few of the companies here who gave us this terrain to play with, we have a mat from Table War sized down to the minimum recommended sizes these days that a lot of people like to play with, which is, oh, off the top of my head, I believe 60 by... Oh man, I can't remember. <laughs> is it 44? 44 by 60, that's what it is. Yeah, 44 by 60. This one's obviously a 30 by 44, so about half that lengthwise. We have Greenleaf Terrain who hand sculpted these uh, these rocks here for us. We've had these forever and they've uh, lasted the test of time, stood the test of time. That's what it is. We have Game Mat uh, Terrain in the craters and the buildings and the walls. And then we have some old Citadel woods that have been beat up by us because we are careless and we are monsters. And then TNT Laserworks has made my little kitty tokens here, the Taco Cats that we'll be using for today's game for this objective. Uh, now, for, obje for speaking of objectives, our secondaries. I had no idea what to pick for mine. Yeah, same. Uh, so I went for assassinate. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I went for engage on all fronts, because sure. You can pull that off easily. I think I should be able to, but like, just, you got a guy running around with that stupid auto-heading amazing flamer thing. It is super good flamer. The best anti-aircraft weapon in all of the <laughs> galaxy. <laughs> I want them to fix that. Please fix that. <laughs> right? I would. You know what? They could just make a rule. If they have the blast rule. They could make flame a rule. Cannot hit things with airborne. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just, just add something to aircraft. Come on, Games Workshop. Have it make sense. Just like Seventh Edition or Horus Heresy. <laughs> Anyways, what's the? Is that your last one? And then uh, while we stand, we fight. Uh, that's all. Air. They're also. I guess which of the three? While point them we out. fly, we fight. Oh, there's only three of them. Okay, there's three I, of them, yeah. I thought there was four. Okay, we don't even have to point that out. Easy peasy. Now for myself, I went with domination because I'm gonna hopefully swarm the board with bodies. I was very uncomfortable with picking objectives here because I built a list that I thought was the well, not thematic, but a list that I well, like in a way thematic, a list that I thought was cool that I really really wanted to play, and I didn't take objectives into consideration whatsoever, which is fine. You know, sometimes you do that. We're not at a tournament. We're just kind of more or less playing for fun. We have Slay the Warlord because maybe I'll catch that little sneaky dude uh, at some point. He'll have to be leading his guys from like the middle or the front, and maybe I'll just get him. And lastly, attrition, because I think I'll be able to kill more a battle round unit-wise than you do. And <laughs> You've got six units. And then maybe it'll work out. Yeah, I mean, I, I do only have six units, so you're probably that right on that should be one. really tough to kill. Yeah, I I'm, think. Oh, not the cultists. <laughs> they, they will not be tough to kill. It's true. But that is what I've got going for me. So we're going to go ahead and roll off for attacker defender. ba 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 ba, ba. I got a two, two. Why are you like this? Boop, boop, boop. One. All right, so what side would you I'll like? I'll take this side. All right, yeah, that's fair. I'm gonna go with this side. We're gonna go ahead and start deploying. And then, the deciding roll off. Right, well, I've deployed my forces. I've got Typhus with Pox Walkers all around him. We have the Tallyman and the Foul Blight Spawn with Cultus in front of them. It's important to make kind of these wraps with it. And then more Cultus over here in this corner. Uh, the the, the Pox Walkers are kind of covered on all aspects here, other than the very back, but that's Ultimately, pretty pretty safe back there, and then of course across from me, we just have three Valkyries with three squads of ten Scions in them. And then the um, non-Warlord Prime is in here. Warlord Prime is in here, and then the two five-man squads are going to drop in. Right, as, as Scions do. We're going to go ahead and roll off now to see who gets to pick who goes first. I got a six. Not a bad start. Ah, five. Oh, oof. well, it is going to me. Uh, sorry, it's going to be me going first, which is nice overall. Uh, mostly just to get on the board and. Uh, push my and just spread out to the stars so that those guys can't fly past me and they have to stay interesting. They have a minimum move, eh? 20. Yeah, 20. Okay, yeah, you can probably make that work. They've also got a hover mode. Oh, then you're fine. I can't stop it then. So I'm just going to probably end up spreading out uh, and that's uh, <laughs> the synopsis of my turn. <laughs> I am going to go up to seven command points in my command phase and I'm not going to score any other victory points and I'm going to go ahead and start moving things. Now I've got a crater with these cultists over here unfortunately so they are going to be uh, negative two to their move but they're going to advance and because of the scenario we're in and if you roll anything less than a three on your advance in the first battle round it just becomes a three. So advancing them first 
a four, so they get to go an extra four. Essentially an extra two because of the crater. So that's where they end up after rolling an eight. Not a bad roll. Typhus is going to go ahead and advance, and he rolls a three, which is, you know, he's in cataphractic armor, so it's only half that, which is not too bad. It does get him to there. And then we're going to roll the tally man up, advancing him. An extra two, but three in this case because of the scenario, which should take him, oops, to about there. And then we're going to go ahead and advance the pox walkers. Yeah, the pox walkers are going to go next. They're going to go an extra three. Okay. Tuck into the head. No, there. Trust me, guys. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just moving stuff forward and trying to make sure I get it protected. Going to advance you an extra three. Uh, with that, you're just going to go to right there. And then these cultists are going to advance. No negative to them. An extra three. And they're going to go this way to close up that gap. And it's going to be cultists around. And then the movement phase cloud of flies on the pox walkers for one CP. So they can't get shot at unless they're the nearest. And they're surrounded by cultists. And then we're also going to spend another command point on a night of, or the dead walk again. I'll explain that <laughs> after I move these guys. All right, that's where they end up. Still on the objective. These guys are on the objective over there. Uh, now, the only thing I kind of messed up, it's not that big of a deal. Only th these two models are not going to be in range to help you out here. So uh, when I spend a command point on Cloud of Flies, the tally man says whenever I uh, spend a CP on a Death Guard stratagem, I roll two dice. And I get the CP back if I roll in exactly a seven. So I don't on that one. And then the dead walk again is another... I believe it's the dead walk again, is another one CP strap for pox walkers. And I do not get the CP back for that one either. So I'm down to five. And the way the dead walk again is, it errata's their built-in rule, uh, changes it completely to say, whenever an infantry model, friend or foe, is slain within seven inches of my pox walker unit, not including pox walkers, I get to add a pox walker to the unit. So if any of these cultists die, minus these two over here, oops. Uh, then I get to add a pox walker to the unit. and But I have to pay the points for that. That's why I am lower on points. And uh, that's typically the idea there. So one little minor correction won't change too much. The dead walk again is supposed to be used at the beginning of the moon phase. It doesn't change anything. Uh, we're going to go to the psychic phase now where we're going to have Mr. Typhus target the cultists out front with putrescent vitality, increasing their toughness by one. There's no point, Ooh. there's no point doing it, to the, they can't be shot, so there's no point doing it for them, right? So let's see if we get that, and we roll, ooh, a four? I think it's a six. I'm gonna go down to four command points, eh, to re-roll that, and that's not a death guard stratagem, so I can't see if I get the CP back. Oh, okay, we got it with perils, nice. All right, so Typhus is gonna perils of the warp, and take one more wound, but he does have disgusting resilience. No, he does take one damage. I believe he's down to six or five, I will go look. Down to five wounds. And the cultists out front are gonna be a little more tough. That doesn't stop these ones from getting shot, obviously, but if the ones out front get shot, which is the ones I would, I think I'd rather keep alive because they're the forward ones, they protect a little bit better from the front. They're gonna maybe be able to do a little bit better there. And then his other power, not in range for smite, he is a level two uh, source for, I don't, want to, I don't want to suffer another perils of the warp though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, whatever, for the fun, Blades of Future Faction. Oh, oh, you've seen that though, right? You've seen that. I wanted though. to be a Perils. <laughs> All right, that does go off. Uh, that one goes off on a five. It gives. Oh, it's not going to matter. I'm going to give it to. I don't. I only did this as a joke. It gives the cultist plus one wound in the fight phase, and if they were attacking with a plague weapon, they could do mortal wounds, but they do not have plague weapons. That, viewers, and friends, specifically to the viewers that are friends and the viewers who are not my friends, but you're all my friends. The end of my turn. I get no victory points. I got a command point. Same. Yeah, sick. I guess you don't you don't really score anything either though. Uh, not the start of my turn. No. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should get out yet or not. Do you fly forward? Do you shoot at me? I swear I'm gonna get you. I'll get this board. I'll get this objectives everywhere. I know you're gonna get the entire board and all the <laughs> objectives. So I think we're gonna start Look at this. jumping out in different places. Well, they have the thing where they can like shoot out like as it moves, right? Do you have to do that? You don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. No, I can grab shoot. So I, I, the way I read it, I think what I'm allowed to do is go into hover mode, mm -hmm. move like 19 inches. Oh, they have a, okay. And then yeah. spit them out. Cool, cool. I guess, uh, yeah, you don't you don't. But I gotta do more than nine away when I do it. Oh, gotcha. All right, well, yeah. you know what? We'll let you figure this all out and show you what it looks like afterwards. The fact that they can hover makes them very flexible when they move. So we don't have to worry about any pivoting or anything like that, especially on a table this small. First little bit, uh, first squad jumped out, moved forward to take the objective and get into a position that they can fire a little bit and hopefully do a thing. And then the Valkyrie's going to head up the board. But does the Valkyrie I know where he's going to go? I think, uh, you know what? 
he's gonna head uh, right up over to here. Specifically not hovering though. Specifically not hovering for him, correct. Mr. Binocular Man's gonna jump out in advance. An extra three, okay. Uh, bring him to right about here, just to get an order range. Boop. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm uh, I mean, it'd him. be cool if you didn't. I'm gonna murder kill him. He's uh, gonna become a box walker. <laughs> no. Sure, they're gonna move to there. Second squad getting out of that Valk. What's so that? this one's gonna drop in a hover mode. You're hanging out there? Yep. Okay. Um, this one will also drop into hover mode. This prime is gonna jump out onto that objective. Behind the rock there. And... I don't know, man, like... <laughs> Did the guy uh, he's gonna hang out, uh, he's gonna just fly back a little bit. Alrighty. No, he <laughs> he's gonna anywhere. have a hard time doing that though. There we go. Uh, we're over to orders, I, I, I guess. Uh, we're gonna order both these squads, first rank fire, second rank fire. Ooh, rapid fire two on their hot shots. Uh, I think that's probably the most value I'm gonna get. And we're just gonna start here with uh, all of the, we'll just do the regular hot shots into that squad of cultists. All right, bring it on. 10 shots on threes, we're rolling ones because the warlord trait. All uh, right. One reroll, turns into a hit. Fives to wound you though. It's only strength three gun, that's right. That's only two wounding hits. All right, well, that does kill two of them. They have no save against that. I am going to look up one thing before I remove any casualties. I'm going to lose your within seven. So we're gonna, those two aren't. We're going to lose you and you. And we're going to add a pox walker up to over there to correct my error, keeping them coherent of the unit when they appear. And then the other one's just going to... Yeah, we're just going to put both of them about here. And those two die. Uh, I'm going to put a pox walker there, coherent, should be within seven of them now, and then you'll go right here instead. And I can, oh, if anyone's curious, I have enough points to get 42 pox walkers, and then I'm <laughs> at a thousand points. These are the volley guns now, on fours, because they're heavy and, and I moved. weapons, right. Uh, boop. Nope, reroll does not help. And these are fours. Ooh. And no save against this either. High AP, correct? Yeah, these are AP minus three. So seven are gonna die. That's eight, gonna be friendo. Eight. Eight are gonna die. It's gonna be more poxwalkers. So that's four. I'm gonna leave you, I think. Uh, we'll go five. And then six. I know I was gonna expose them to get shot up by the Valkyrie, but that is okay. Five. Yeah, six, seven, eight are gonna go down. But they stand back up very shortly as those now gifted with the blessing of Nurgle. Three, I guess we'll keep putting them out here so they're coherent. I'm going to try and keep that guy the closest. Come on over here. And I guess we'll fill a couple of gaps up in there too because I just have a question, I guess, for the viewers on this one. I looked up a couple of the rules in the rule book there and it, under coherency it says when adding models to a unit, they just have to be coherent to the unit before. And I don't want to imagine daisy chain is real, but then again, you got to remember you roll all the dice. So like if Josh rolled one die at a time for those shots and I lost my models one at a time, would I not add my models one at a time? I know there was a rule in the chapter approved for eighth edition that clarified this a little bit more, but I don't quite see it in the core rule book. So I'm going to play it safe and play it like it was eighth edition, as I recall it, where everything has to be coherent to the unit as the start of the phase. So therefore I wouldn't be able to like, oh, you killed one model. I put a model down, killed another model, killed another model kill another model and then, you know, keep yep. the chain up forward, then make it like crazy easy charges into them. I don't think that's how it's meant to be played. And this looks a little more thematic anyways. But you know, maybe throw me a page on the rules that says I can't do the daisy chaining because I'd rather not be able to do it. Or like, at least I'd feel better knowing I can't do it. But anyways, eight pox walkers coming back around there and like couple inside. I'm gonna spend one command point on killing zone. Uh, it's only gonna affect one other squad, but basically if I continue to shoot at those cultists, I get plus one to wound them. Counteracts the plus one toughness I gave him. Yep. Not bad, not yep. bad at all. Do I get the command point back on a five? Yeah, because both the guys are out. I do. Okay, well I get, you're supposed to roll for my uh, for the Aquila when I use my CPs, I think. Uh, I wasn't out yet. Oh, true, yeah, he was actually yep. in the plane. Nice, okay. Well, you got your one CP back, so it just counteracts the cost of that one. Nice. 10 shots from the regular old hot shots here. Uh, threes, we're rolling ones. Mm. Ooh, boys, you gotta do better. Rerolls. Okay, they help a bit. These are back to killing on fours. Another four. So with that, I think you guys have already kind of served their purpose. These four are going to die. It's gonna add four more pox walkers. Brains. <laughs> Brains. Brains. 
Remember that scene from the, the Halloween special, The Simpsons, where the zombies went to go try, try, and, try and get over? No brains. brains. <laughs> no brains. <laughs> All right, bring it on with the, the actual hot shots. The volley the, guns. The volley guns, I mean. Uh, fours, we're rolling ones. Oh, these are going to be wounded on threes now. They are. But my psychic powers, Josh. These are going to kill you on threes? Bring it on. All right, that's probably the rest of the unit dead. <laughs> uh, that's another nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I only got six left. Right? Yeah, because the other unit's over there. Yes. My objective, though. Three, four, five, and six. Now, unfortunately, if I was to add a model to there, I'm pretty sure I'm too far away from the objective. Though I will double check. See, it's weird, because, like, those guys were added this phase. Do I have to remain coherent to these guys when I add them still? That's my question. You yeah. Know? That's what I'm saying, everyone. I'm going to just kind of add you guys to where you were before. Bloop. Hello. Alrighty. So that's one squad of cultists gone. All added to the Poxwalkers. I got 40 Poxwalkers right now. <coughs> but they can be shot at by the Valkyries. Valkyrie Uno will shoot at the cultists in the back. Ooh, alrighty. 12 shots of the multiple rocket pods. Uh, hitting on threes because I entered hover mode. Ooh. Would it be twos or fours otherwise? Uh, it would be fours otherwise. Oh, how come? Uh, I get a rule called roving gunship, so if I go into hover mode, I get plus one ahead. Oh, he's that's right, just the regular guy manning it. Yeah, they only yep. get on fours. Yeah, they're not actual scions. That's true. All right, yeah. <laughs> Should be threes to kill, because it's AP minus one and strength five. Uh, yeah. I guess I could put a couple of the shots on guys in cover. How many wounds is it? Uh, there's six so far. All right, well, I'm going to start with these three back here. Six ups. That saves one, so two are dead. And then I have to keep going on him. So that's the fourth one, he's dead. I got two more to do. Where do they want to go? Where do they want to go? Oh, I'm just gonna go you and you, I guess. See, the question is, yeah, I guess, yeah, they're gonna go and go in there. Five, in there. I sprinkled the five in throughout the, uh, the unit there. Now I must say, as an Age of Sigmar death player, it is actually starting to kill me not doing the daisy chain thing to the objective. You'd be all over the board. You'd be on every corner of the board. I, I would, you could get back here. I, like at this point, Josh is a thousand percent correct. Yeah. I would have models already right here and right there and in that corner of the board. If I could do it as the way that it might be done, this is the more balanced way for sure. Cause if I did that on my turn, I automatically charge his guys. Yep. And they'd be like, oh, I would, I would have told Josh, don't get out of your vehicles, just stay in your vehicles and shoot me. I would have just hovered here and just rocket pods. Exactly, yeah that's, yeah, but, yeah. that's typically it. So keep keep playing it this way. Just know as a death player for Age of Sigmar. <laughs> but I like the I like the look of it. This is, now I got a lot of pox walkers. Well, I still have 15 more of these guys to go. Oh, we have more shots too. Yes, multi-laser on threes and follow it up by twos. Twos. Uh, AP, nothing. nothing on that? All right, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. well, I guess we'll put it on these two guys over there. Both dead, rip, rip. These guys are easy. Pox walker, pox walker. Uh, next Valkyrie, continue shooting at them. Bam. Rocket pods are looking for threes. Uh, pull up my misses. And then looking for threes again. These ones have AP1, so a couple fails. Uh, I'm going to pull from... We'll put it on that one guy in cover there. Maybe that'll help him out a little bit. He is. No, he's dead. Pull you out and then you, because we can keep coherency. So that's four. And then the rest I'm going to put over here. So that's two, three... Four, five, six more dead cultists. I have six remaining. I'm just gonna let Josh keep shooting. I'm just gonna put the pox walkers back here to cohere into the original unit. Uh, the multi laser. I got two hits. I'm looking for twos. One wound. Yes. Over there, six up. Oh, that died there is a four. He dies as well. And then we have one more Valkyrie. Yeah, but the Valkyrie's gonna target the pox walkers. Ah, pox walker time. Okay. Adding to the back there because I'm. Oh, the reason I'm not adding to the front because I'm pretty sure I'm already at like my limit to how far I could go from where the original unit was for coherency out there. Uh, and then we have these five guys left and then shooting at these dudes over here with yep. the uh, Valkyrie and the Pox Walkers. So the Valkyrie, uh, the multi-laser first, uh, hitting on fours. And then I should be wounding on threes. I am T4. So three. One yeah. wounding hit. Disgusting resilience ignores it. Go, go, rocket pods, fours. All right. Then these are looking for threes. At least one damage each. Uh, one damage a piece, yeah. No point in trying to put this on cover anywhere. They have seven up safe, and they're AP1. Resilience! Uh, three of them get gunned down. Well, these three in the back are not gonna serve me all that well. 
All right, that's it for the Valkyrie shooting. Okay, I'm gonna spend two command points on Hammer Blow. So in the shooting phase, when a model is destroyed by an attack made by an Aeronautica Imperialis model with a flyer battlefield roll, the destroyed model's unit is pinned until the start of your Aww. next turn. Uh, you're gonna have your advance and charge rolls, not your move rolls. Just your advance rolls. Uh, okay. And then when resolving the attack with a ranged weapon, uh, subtract one from the hit roll. Well, I don't have those. Okay, well, it is what it is. That is going to bring it to the morale phase for them. I'm not going to auto-pass with them, so maybe they stick around on a one. They do not. So one's going to run. Bloop. And then I have to roll up for the other remaining four. And on ones or twos, they're going to boogie-woogie. They're all okay. So I just lose one to the morale. Now, if you're curious if that counts as being destroyed, it does, but it never triggers rules that are affected by models being destroyed. So I won't get a poxwalker from that. It's very clear in the rule book. And I like, it when, things, I like it when things are clear. And that is gonna conclude the first battle round. And we're gonna go on to turn two for Typhus and his kind of many poxwalkers. So in my command phase, I'll get a command point. I believe I'm going up to five. Is that true? Yes. Yep, back up to five. And then at the end of it, I do score five victory points because I have this one objective. Unfortunately, I do not have this one because those cultists got shot up to death. Well, you know what? I guess a lot of them would have... No, because there's like AP3 and everything from their shots. AP2 at least over there, so I wouldn't have had cover against Yeah, it was AP3 shots. on all those shots. Even if I claimed it. Uh, so we're going to go into movement now. And their advance is had right now, which is kind of spooky. They're going to get lit up this turn, but we're going to hopefully just persevere through it. And that's the name of the game. Oh! Bleh. Do I command point that? Well, it's only half. <laughs> so they're only advancing half an inch. So they're going four and a half inches. Ooh. I think I'm going to spend a command point reroll on that. Oh, okay. Not bad. Does the bird give me a command point? And the new background? Go bird! The bird. Oh, I rolled a six. The bird did a thing. Nice. That's one more command point for Josh. Thing. And I can't, I can't get any command point off that because it's not a death guard strategy. I'm down to four, but they're at least going an extra three inches. The things I have to do to make this work. That's where they all end up, spreading to the objectives. Well, not that one over there, it's a little too far away. Uh, one thing I did notice though is there was the cultists. Uh, my math was kind of messed up last time. I'm like, I should have one more cultist somewhere, but I couldn't see him. He was in all the box walkers. <laughs> so what I did was left him there and pulled him instead, but I do owe Josh one more morale check. Oh, okay. Which didn't matter, he's okay. That's the uh, champion there. Very brave. Uh, they're gonna go ahead and move though. They're gonna run over this way. One inch, that's okay. They're just gonna go tuck into here and hang out on this OBJ. I don't think I, they served their purpose. They have served their purpose. Boop. Oh yeah, was I gonna do the dead walk again? Mm. Yeah, I'll do, sorry, I was gonna do the dead walk again, so do I get a CP back? No, it cost me one. And then I'm not, do, I'm not gonna do Cloud of Flies. Obviously, that would be ridiculous. That should be it for the Pox Walkers movement. That puts me down to three command points, I believe. Uh, four, I think. I used one reroll on the run. I was at five. Oh. So I've done a four on the one. Yeah, I should be down. And then Typhus is going to advance because half an inch. Nice. <laughs> like I said, you know what? I didn't actually, well, he's got no shooting attacks anyway. So he's just going to go up to there. And then we're going to have the tally man. Oh, let me look at the range on his grenade. He's going to be a little too, I'm not going to advance him. But I'm going to move him there. Just, he's going to be able to shoot his plasma pistol, but the grenade's going to be too far away to throw at him. And then you, my friend, are going to move to right there, which will give you range to shoot your flamer at him. His nine inch range. And with that, it's going to bring it to the psychic phase. Uh, we are going to do putrescent vitality first on the poxwalkers. We're going to get it with an 11. So they're going to be toughness five and strength five poxwalkers. And we're going to go ahead and throw out a smite as well, which will also get on an 11. That's going to be d6 mortal wounds to this flyer. This Valkyrie will take two mortal wounds. We're then gonna go ahead and shoot the Foul Blight Spawn at the Valkyrie. We're gonna spend a command point on Foul Gush, which lets me roll two dice for the amount of shots and three dice for the strength. We're also gonna spend a command point on Veterans of the Long War. But let's see if we get either of those back. Foul Gush, we don't get back, and Veterans of the Long War, we don't get back. So that costs me two more command points. That brings you down to one. So we'll do the amount of shots first. I roll two dice, take the highest. We got five, keep that. And then we are going to roll three dice to determine the strength, taking the two highest. Strength eight, which is all I wanted because we have veterans on. So we have five automatic hits that wound on twos, rerolling ones because it's a plague weapon. And twos, reroll the one. And that is five wounding hits at AP three. Looking for six ups? Oh. Uh, make two. You would. You literally needed two to survive. He does three damage a shot. See, here's the key is that I don't bother ever checking the odds. 
That's yeah. So I can't. I don't get upset. I'm like, oh, yeah. cool. Did like, did I live? Did I need to roll that? I got no idea. Look at that. That's all I can say. Look at that living. It was like it was perfect. I'm like, I need one smite to do two to three damage, and I need him. It did it all in my head again, and that's what you get. In my head, I'm like, oh, he's dead. Got him. No problem. Done. Pfft, yikes. Ah, man, there's nothing I can do about that either. That's my only attempt at killing it this turn. Oh, well, that's the end of my turn. I can't charge. I advanced. That is going to be the end of Death Guard turn two. Alrighty, what's going on in the command phase? I get 10 victory points for my two objectives. Right. I feel um, accomplished. Do better than I am. Uh, and then I do get uh, a command point. We also forgot to mention your two points for engaged in all fronts last turn. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm at 12 to your five right now. Correct. Movement, let's start here. Uh, we're off the board. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Almost rotted him away, corroded him away. Not today, Foul Blade Spawn. Good try, though. Um, continuing on here, I mean, I think the game is literally just sit and shoot. Yeah, it's uh, just sit and shoot. The goal is, if you can just keep hammering them down, then I'm pretty much out of the game. But, we'll see. Yeah, well, it's like, do I want to get these guys out? Oh, it's I got another 10-man squad, there's, right? there's, there's 10 more guys in there and uh, two, two more squads of five that can come down to and just, like, crossfire. Yeah, so I think I am going to get them out and start to place them and move them. Do you want to move It'll those guys first? It'll just be kind of awkward. I don't want to move them because I, I don't want to take the hit penalty. Right, heavy weapons. Over here, yeah. I'm going to just move him in hover mode over this way. And then with his weird disembarkation rules. Yeah, they're going to grab shoot it, but they should be safe when they do it. Yeah, no, no risk of death. They've done this before. This boys are jumping out right there. Um... Is this shooting time? We're close. Well, I got two more squads to bring in, and I'm trying to figure oh, yeah. out if I want to move my other prime. Oh, he's behind the rock. Oh. Yeah, because I could put a squad back there to hold the objective. Um, I think we're going to drop one of my squads in, though. I don't really have any great drop zones yet. Right, this is a little too tight over yeah, there. Yeah, that was too tight over there. Um, you know what? I am going to take this uh, prime back here and advance him, though. He's going to go an extra five. He's going behind and around to support these guys. Yep. Yeah. Poke his head out. Ah, oh, I still can't see him. There he is. Hey, buddy. He is just running. Over there, and then one squad is going to show up near the objective. Right. Uh, just to kind of help hold this. Just to give you a better idea of what they're going for. And, you know, more guns is always good, too. Guns are great, man. Over here, he's going to order them to reroll hit rolls of one. Ooh, and take aim. Take aim. And then over here, we're going to order uh, the first rank fire, second rank fire again. We'll start with the squad back here that dropped in. Uh, there's no order, so I'm not going to overcharge the plasmas. Smart. Is that the only thing fired? No, we got the hot shots in range two. Probably. Yeah, we got two hot shots. We're going to start with the two plasmas first, though. Uh, these are hitting on threes. And threes. One damage each. So I have two disgusting resilient rolls to make. One is going to kill a guy. We'll just lose you. My two hot shots. One hit. Uh, one hit. And then five. five yeah. Nope. No. And then there's kill zone plus one to wound. Yes. One command point. Boo! Um, let's do this squad over. Ah, uh, no, we'll do the plasma squad over there. Starting with hot. No supercharging. Yeah, there's an. Uh, I can reroll. Yeah, I don't really need it right now. I don't. Hmm. That maybe could have been clever. Uh, threes rolling ones. The hot shots. Yes, and then these are looking for um, fours. Yes, fours to wound right now because of plus one wound. Three wounding hits. Didn't need it. You got three five ups. Resilience stops two of them. I lose one pox walker. Four plasma shots on threes. Rerolling ones. Oh yeah. Ah, he wouldn't be fine. <laughs> and then uh, looking for twos. twos. It should still be twos. Yep. Three more wounding hits. One damage each. Resilience stops one. So two are gonna die there. Uh, well, we got coherency going pretty strong over here, so we'll keep that going. Let's do this big old squad, starting with uh, yield plasma pistol. Nice. Classic. Hitting on a three. Uh, actually, you know what? I might pop a strat on these guys. I will pop a stratagem on them. They're going to go point blank. So basically, anything that's half range, which is just going to be the volley guns, uh, get a plus one strength, and then a strength five, which matches your toughness. Gotcha. All right. Let's do them first for fun. Threes, re-rolling ones, three re-rolls, turn to two more hits. These are then looking for threes to wound. 
Resilience for these nine winning hits. Not bad, but almost half made, so five do die though. I don't think I'm gonna need you guys too much because I got the cultist back there. So three, four, and we don't need you for coherency either, so you're dead. And again, I got coherency because I got three over there, and well, that's all that matters actually. These are the regular hot shots now. Uh, looking for threes, re-rolling ones. Now looking for force wound. Because of the plus one. Yes, so we got three wound against. Oh, it helped. Resilience. We're gonna stop one of those. Two die, two die. Who's it gonna be? Well, you can die, you're pretty safe to kill. And then the rest are kind of needed for coherency purposes. For the most part, so I'm not gonna, well, I guess I can kill you, we don't need you. That's two inches. And that was it. Squad here is gonna shoot at him, uh, starting with the hot shots. Bring it Which on. With volley guns, I guess. Uh, threes, rolling ones. Reroll says, I didn't do that much better. You should be on fours. Yep. Only one three. Didn't really need the point blank on two that. Two threes. Oh, two threes. Ooh. Yeah. And resilience. Oh, bad news bears. <laughs> Losing eight guys. Take these four from back here because I don't really need them anymore. Four and then four. All of them dead. Not overcharging plasma. Uh, hits. Wounds. Okay. Resilience. No, that's one more dead dude. Uh, you look fresh to die. And then these are the regular hot shots under the first rank fire, second rank fire. Threes. Three twos, no ones. Uh, fours, I believe. Yes, with the plus one to wound. Big deal here. Fives for resilience. Stopping one. Three are going to die. Let's see. We'll lose you two. And we just kind of like start losing guys from the middle now. Ah, uh, we need you to make that little triangle thing. There we go. The first Valkyrie is going to go ahead and put shots in. Uh, starting with the rocket pods. And these are looking for threes. No help whatsoever with three rolls. Didn't really need it though. Uh, then looking for fours. Resilience. We stop zero to die. Uh, we can afford to lose you, and I think you can go. Uh, you can go as well. Multi laser. I uh, got one hit, and a strength six should wound. Indeed. That is a failed resilience. We're going to lose you. Two more CP for the hammer blow, because the Valkyrie shot him up, and that's having my advance and my charge roll again. I'm going to need to roll a ridiculous charge to get something out of these box walkers. Yeah. Uh, last Valkyrie shooting into them. Um, Rocket Pod, you still got more than 11. I do, yes. So let's maximize. Oh, I tried random shots. Yeah, 2d6. Uh, two separate weapons that are D6 each. Yep. Blast weapons. Looking for threes. And then fours. Another four. Resilience! Uh, one lives, but three more are going to die. We're going to lose one, two. And then that's probably two inches there. Multi-laser. I got two hits. Wounding on threes. Two winning two hits. Two more. Stops one. Stops one, I can afford to lose you. <laughs> Is that it for your shooting? Uh, that's it, yeah. How embarrassing, you couldn't even kill them. I couldn't kill a single squad of Poxwalkers, you're right. Couldn't even kill one squad of Poxwalkers. All right, well, after that, they are, they are mindless, so they, they're immune to morale. They don't have to take morale checks. And uh, you don't get engaged in all fronts. And no, I didn't get, I, didn't, I actually would have got attrition if I killed that plane, but it lived <laughs> the yeah, two sixes. I would, have, I would have got attrition on that. Oh, well. Now, if anyone's curious, for them to make a charge, they need to roll an eight on their charge, even though they're that close because of the, the hammer blow. Is that taking into account the um, crater and all that too, or no? I'm gonna try my best to avoid it. That is oh, not okay. taking yep. that into effect. I think I can avoid it by going through that crate, uh, that crack there. Now, yep. if I had to go through the crater, then- oh, You can go through the crack, yeah. That's... It's a 12 inch charge if I had to. <laughs> Maybe it's 10, I'd have to look at the rule to be sure, but it's 12, 10 or 12, but I'm gonna try to avoid that anyways. As we go into Death Guard, turn two. Three? Yeah, three. Gaining command point going up to two. And I do have two of these objectives for 10 victory points in the primary. All right, that's where they're gonna end up moving. Got all of them within two inches of another model or two other models. Same as back here, got a little triangle thing going on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and, ooh, I don't even know what to do with these dudes here. We're gonna go ahead and advance the tally man and Typhus, the tally man first. He's gonna go into the crater, unfortunately. So he's gonna go a total of seven inches because of the minus two. Then Typhus already has half his advance, so he's gonna go <laughs> half an inch extra. You know, I'm just gonna avoid the crater. We're just gonna go to there. 
He's a slow boy. This isn't looking so good for the death card. And uh, Psychic. Oh, I guess we got you. We'll advance you. Blah. It's going to go to there. I got nothing crazy fancy to do with you. I guess the smart thing would actually just be come back here. You're just going to hang out back there. And then Psychic Face. We'll try Petrus of Vitality. We got it with an 11. And then we're going to go ahead and Blades of Petrifaction. Bam. Got it with a 5. That's plus one of wound in close combat. Now, uh, no, got no shooting to do, so we're going to charging. I'm going to declare a charge against just the two guys in the middle there. The, the, the actual warlord. That's the warlord, right? That's the warlord, yeah. And the scions right beside him. These uh, ones here? Yeah. I get it with a nine. So that's halved to four and a half inches. I was thinking about overwatching. Oh, go for it, by all means. You, you're cool? Oh, I go for it, yeah. Okay. I don't... Luke was asking the... Um, Can you lower my charge? There was another uh, regiment. But yeah, I would reduce the charge roll if I get a single hit. Gotcha. All right. Um, and I was close to the guy with the relic. So do I get the command point back? Oh, new battle round. No. no. Uh, these are just the regular hot shots. Uh, nothing. Plasma pistol. Hey. Oh, that hit. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Volley guns. Got uh, not great. <laughs> just one. All right. And that's a wound. Mm. All right, we got a wound. We have disgusting resilience. Uh, we fail that. Uh, we're going to lose you. I'm not really getting it. Because half, I rolled a nine, but my charge is half. This is where I get to, sadly. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure I don't touch any of the terrain, though, as I do this. I'll show you where it ends up. All right, well, that's, that's what I get. I'm getting one fight in. I'm getting one fight in. How many guys do I have in? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 1920-ish, exactly. Oh, they're gonna pile in. I gotta get closer to him though when I pile in, so. Rawr! Rawr! We're gonna beat him up! Rawr! And then uh, this guy is gonna be able to fight, and that's pretty much it, guys. That is it. That is. I got my. I'm getting my fight in. I'm getting four models to fight with. <laughs> I'm going to use the stratagem I really wanted to use from War of the Spiders. Well, I think it's called Mutant Strain. Mutated pox walkers. Uh, if I roll an unmodified six to wound, it as a mortal wound instead of its normal damage. See if the bird helps. No. Nope. No. Oh, I might get that back. Whoa! I don't get it back, sadly. Tally man! Next time. Here we go. Nasty hands coming your way. Forest to hit. I get to reroll all. Fa <laughs> I got the tally man nearby. It's okay. I got the tally man nearby. I get to reroll all hit rolls. And. Huh. Nice. Three hits. Six. Super dope. Super dope. Super dope. And. I am currently strength five with plus one to wound, so twos. Nice, three wounding hits, no AP. This is under the- That's Warlord. Warlord, okay, yeah. fours. Oh, he's alive? Nice. Yep. Oh, I do two damage to him. Not bad. He's only got a four save, I guess, yeah, carapace armor or whatever it is. Yep, and he doesn't have an invuln save, unlike like the elite officers in the regular guard. Yeah, they have refractor fields. He doesn't, he doesn't get one. He doesn't. Interesting. Well, maybe it's too bulky as he grab shoots all over the place. I think it's the little thing that's on their chest. It's like, it looks like a plate with a little chain. Oh. Yeah. I don't know much about oh. that. I just, I just know they have refractor fields. I don't even know what a refractor... Refra in my mind, a refractor field could be like anything. It'd be like a little device. It's a little have. field that refracts. Yeah, it refracts projectiles or whatever. <laughs> I get four attacks with my chainsword. Uh, he hits on threes. At least he knows how to use it, kind of. Yeah. And then he um, wounds on like fives. Oh, you got two wounds. <laughs> bam, bam. Well, you kill one. Uh, For what it's worth, those are 18 minus one chain swords. <laughs> For what it's worth, they're coming in to support the officer. Don't let them get the boss. <laughs> They've already failed. <laughs> okay, can I swing my AP4 power fist at you? Bring it. Total AP4 value. Power fist. Uh, fours. What's it called? It's a power fist, but the lions get AP oh, okay, one better okay. on everything. Nice. Uh, that's smush. So oh, D3 wounds. Oh, I failed. I'm dead. <laughs> squish. You squish that guy. Uh, how many other guys did I have attacked? Like uh, you six? had four, four, eight, it looks like. Because that guy was in half an oh, inch of him. Yeah. was probably within half an inch of him. Or within an engagement range of him. But that guy was in half an inch, so was that guy. So eight guys swinging. These are fours. Followed by fives. One? Resilience. No. Squish. Blech. And with that, there's no morale test to be done. Uh, I didn't really kill anything, and... I can see. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that's game. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, what would have happened is uh, he, I think he's probably out of combat right now. He is. But these guys fall back. He, he tells them orders to shoot. them, hey, hey, still keep fighting. Yeah, um, and then all of this can shoot at my characters. 
Yeah, I got the other Valkyrie showing up, and then I got another squad of Scions showing up in right. the backfield. I would be very quickly left with only three, probably not even three characters, and like maybe five I'd probably cultists. get some characters, yeah. I, yeah, I think you'd probably well, get some characters. because you've got, I don't know, it looks like maybe 20 Poxwalkers left, and I think I killed somewhere in the range of like, what did we say? Like, it was like 35 or something? I get like, I can have up to 62. I think you killed about 35. Well, I'm saying run. like, yeah. oh, oh my, yeah, next turn of shooting. Yeah, I killed like 35. And of them. I only have, I think, exactly 20 or like at this point, maybe 17 left. And now you're in the good rapid fire range on my exactly. hot shots? Exactly. So yeah, there's, there's, no, there's nothing I can really do. And you're already up on points too. So you guys could just watch Josh throw more dice and make me remove models. But I got to do what I wanted to do with my army. It's just... Uh, a little unsure of how the rule works of how placing models with the Poxwalkers. Because, like, again, like I said, that Age of Sigmar person in me wants to... But if I was able to do that, I probably would have won. Because I would have been able to charge them, them, and them. And I would have had the whole board. And that's not exactly thematic for what I want to do. I wanted my... It's, it's, it looks better when my guys die and they stand back up where they die. Yep. And it's just, unfortunately, Hammer Blow was kind of crippled my second turn as well. So you got one more free turn of shooting at me. Right. It is what I, it is. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I feel like I played this right. What do you think of my regular humans? Uh, my totally regular humans. Well, they beat the crap out of my regular humans, that's for <laughs> sure. And then my regular zombies. Well, not so regular zombies. Yeah, your T5 zombies yeah. with a 5 up to ignore damage. Oh, that's right. I, f I feel like because they're specialists, they're elite, they had an answer to everything, which is nice. Right? Yep. I got my guys to super high toughness. I'm like, whatever, I don't care about his hot shotguns. It's like, oh, here's plus one strength, plus one wound. I'm like, uh, okay. And then I'm like, well, at least I'll eventually get to you. Oh, let me let me hammer you into the ground so you can't actually keep up to me. And you're able to skirt around me. I'm like, there, I'm, and I'm sure there's more answers in that book for other things there's, as well. It's fantastic. Um, Unquestioning Obedience is one that didn't come up, but it's super nice. Uh, using the morale phase, select one Tempestor Primer Commissar from your army until the end of the phase when a morale test is taken for friendly Tempestus unit within 12. Uh, they just auto pass. Right. So they have, an, they have yeah, it, they're pretty cheap. Like, without their stratagems, they're, they're still pretty okay, but with their stratagems, they have a lot of answers to a lot of threats. And that's typically what you want to see with an elite army. Right. I've got another one just going through for this specific regiment. Um, sixes to wound uh, on my hotshot stuff is a mortal wound instead, so I can get through it in Vaughn saves if I need to. Oh, nice, yeah, you can try and pierce through those too. Um, but every like every power fist in this list is AP minus four. Every Just hot shot capping, volley gun or yeah. rifle is AP minus three. Every plasma is AP minus four. So what is the rule? Just your weapons are AP plus one? Yeah, they, they're, they're one AP better. Uh, that includes all my close combat, so like just their regular chain oh, swords chain and swords, close yeah. combat <laughs> weapons are all AP minus one. So these are the best equipped scions. They're, I think the lore for this regiment is supposed to be that they work close with the Mechanicus. Oh, okay, that makes, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, because like literally the strat is get from the Mechanicus. But the, the Warlord trait of you give a bubble of reroll hit rolls of one, amazing. Yeah. Their Good relic idea. that I didn't take is a bubble of a five up invuln save. Like, it feels like they're fairly well equipped. And like the last game I played with them, obviously I sunk like seven, eight hundred points into kind of useless but cool looking Aeronautica models. Right. Um, but yeah, I think this is a lot closer to how it will play when I get my Toroxes and I got to get more squads. And then you mentioned like you thought you're better off with the Torox, but I thought these Valkyries perform well against the Horde with the Missile Pods too. Missile Pods are value. So, yeah. um, it's, it's each of the missile pods is basically a, a heavy bolter, um, and at the time of filming this, heavy bolters are still one damage. Yeah. But the assault D6, and then the multi laser, the toroxes when I get them will be cheaper, and they will have a storm bolter at AP minus one. Hmm. They'll have two hot shot volley guns, and then they'll have a 20 shot strength four assault cannon, that will be AP minus one because of the regiment. Alrighty then. Well, folks, that will be the end of this game. It's an overwhelming victory for the Scions, the Cappy Eagles, right? Uh, these guys are the Lambden Lions. These are Lambden Lions. Are is that the one you tip? Are you just going through them all I, right now? That, I'm probably going to be playing that one. The Cappy Eagles are the ones that, if, when you jump out of a transport, you get plus one a hit, which That's, means yeah. that under the current rules right now, plasma doesn't overheat, which is nice. And it's also that you're you don't get a penalty for moving and shooting your heavy weapons. Yep. So, I don't know, it feels like that's one, like, cool, check out this cool plasma thing that's going to be valid for... Not that much longer, probably. Right, so I, I'm not bothering with them. Still good with the hotshot volley guns, though. It is nice with the hotshot volley guns. Got some potential there. Anyways, folks, uh, Josh and I are going to go ahead and film another one now. Uh, another 1,000 point game. I don't know what I want to play, though. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more Incursion and general 40k videos to come out in the future. And as always, 
Happy Wargaming. Thanks so much for watching that game, folks. Don't forget, paired with it in the Mini Wargaming Vault, just by clicking the link down below, you can check out this 1,000 point game of Space Wolves against House Mortan, Imperial Knights, and see how the Marines fare against the big scary robots. Again, if you're not a Vault member, you can click the link down below to get yourself a seven day free trial. Thanks for watching, everyone, and happy Wargaming.